Right, today I'm going to give you some insight into how we work on the levels of some of the rehab exercises in the lumbar spine course. Now we're going to work on, again, regressions, progressions, alternatives, working on load, stability, that sort of thing. And we're going to use the side plank as the example. So let me show you what I mean. So the side plank, which is one of the best core exercises for strength, and basically helping out back pain and keeping resilience in that core. We work on the base, which is starting off on your knees. So your side plank on your knees, I go through the instruction, that sort of thing. And this helps with your hip hinge. So when you're working on a side plank into this position, you're working on, of course, working on obliques and QL and the muscles on the lateral side of the trunk, but you're also trying to improve your hip hinge mechanism and get building up that strengthening on one side, using the glutes, that sort of thing. So I would always start in a kneeling position or on your knees and your shoulder. The reason for this is it's a short lever hinge, okay? So it's like the glute bridge, okay? And it's a progression, if you like, from the glute bridge. This position is also a bit kinder on the shoulder. So if people who have got a bit of shoulder stability issues or any strength issues in here, it's a little bit nicer. Then you're not too far from the floor, similar to when you're doing planks on your knees. So on your knees into that position there, and it allows them to work on that short lever position. There's not too much load going on here. However, the technicality is quite difficult, and that's why we focus hard on that core exercise, work on that one first before you either progress or anything like that. Now, let's work on the regression part, with the R part, first, and then we'll come back to progression. So for a regression, what you need to do is go to a wall. So for this exercise, if that is too hard for the person, as in they're not strong enough on their side, they haven't got their hip hinge very good, maybe they're not so good on their glute bridge, very, they're not good with that, or they've got shoulder pain or shoulder stability issues or even shoulder injuries, then you move them to a wall. Now this is really regressing it. So this is a point where you can lean them on a wall like that. Okay, now again, if they've got shoulder problems, well you probably have to go this far and lean them like that. Now that's not much, you know, for the common person, that's not much work here, but if you notice, you can still feel it working. This is where they can work on their pelvic floor, they can work on their glute, okay? They can get the idea how they've got to be using one side to stabilize. Now that can also be progressed, of course. You go out into an elbow like that and just come further apart. Now, you can either go feet together. I sort of like going into that split stance because that's what you're gonna be when you go into a progression, which I'll show you in a moment, of the side plank on the floor, you go with your feet start with that. A lot of people do it this way. I just prefer going that way. I find it's better for stability. You've got more things to play with and you have to work a little bit harder to maintain that alignment and you can work your glutes a little better with that one leg back. So this is a really good spot to be in and I can really feel that. Okay, so this is getting the person, getting that position right, starting to work on that and again, good for people who have got a bit of back pain, maybe they're in that acute phase, they're not ready to load it like that, you move them to the wall. Now, from there to there, as you can see, it's quite a jump. So, I've got an interim step from going from a regression through to progressing that exercise back to there, okay? So I'll show you what I mean. So to progress the regression exercise on the wall, you need something like a bench top or some sort of height that you're gonna lean on, all right? So something like this, which is a bench stool or your kitchen bench or something in the gym that's gonna be high enough to give you just a little bit of an angle. So you need, you need it about this sort of height or maybe even a bit higher, get into that side plank stance that you would be on the floor on your feet, which is a progression of the one on your knees to get that, and I can already feel that, Again, I should have learnt my stance with this. I learned the technique, and then I've got to load it. And again, there's more load going through here, all right? So that movement there is the progression. To get that even further, go something lower. So get onto maybe a sofa, maybe it's your bed, all right? Something that's still not quite on the floor that you need to work on. So down into here, and again, it's even more load through the shoulder, all right? It's even more load through here. I have to work harder through my pelvis to maintain that, okay? So that position there. And once you get lower and there's more load through the shoulder, you're gonna to have to start working on posting that shoulder back, which is the stuff I explained to you on the course inside those exercises. So how do we progress that? Let's go back on in here. 
Okay, so to progress that side plank, we normally go for stability over load. Now from the knees to the feet, that's sort of load, okay, it's a progression. But from that point on, we really wanna go for some stability, make sure we tick that box before we add even more load on. So for a side plank on your feet, the stability component is rotating into a front plank. So here's what I mean. If you're going from a side plank on your feet at that point there, what you're trying to do for the stability component is trying to work out how to stabilize through here, move through your hips and your shoulders and slowly rotate into that side plank. Now this point here takes a little bit of practice, okay? From going from a front plank, rotating, making sure your hips don't move or your shoulders don't move separate. They've got to move together. So you've got to stabilize and rotate, all right? So that's your stability component. Going from side plank to front plank to side plank to front plank. Now that will work on more stability mechanisms through here to try and create a more stable unit in your core. Of course, yes, there's load. There's always going to be load with stability exercises, but where the focus is the stability part. Now, you can't really do that one on your knees, but you can, again, here we go, you can regress that if that's just too much. If the person can't you know, handle the load from going from front plank to side plank, maybe they don't have enough strength, maybe they need to work on the actual coordination. You can actually do that on the wall. So you can go from the side plank here, okay, and then work out how to rotate here. So they can get that rotating mechanism, learning not to separate the shoulder or the upper body from the lower body by twisting through here. They're trying to maintain a stability part here. So this needs to be locked here. They move the ball and sockets. So I'm moving here and moving through here, twisting through my feet into that position, making sure when I move back, I don't move my hips, as in don't twist in my spine, don't move my shoulder, twist in my spine. I'm actually trying to keep my spine stable, hence the word stability. So that's the little regression, if they're having problems with the technique, move back into progression, all right? So that is your stability part. How do we then add load to the side plank as before? You simply use a band. The load is to load up this, and load up this, because we're in a side plank, we're using it back, and we're using our glutes. So what I suggest you do is use a band. Now, it doesn't have to be really, really thick like that. That might be a really big load. You might want to use a smaller band and tie it around something that's not going to move. What you do, to get that person into the side plank with the resistance coming in from behind, okay? So at that point, I can actually go back to a kneeling side plank, and this is where I add load from this point here. So from here, you're adding load to the thrust part, the hip hinge, the glute bridge, whatever you want to call that, is into here. So I've actually got more work rate for my glutes, my hammies, my posterior chain, the back, and that's how I add my load to the side plank, get me stronger through that position. All right, it's a lot harder to maintain that. Again, how do you progress that? Is you go into your full side plank on your feet, and again, there you go. There's my load, it's pulling me back. I have to work hard that posterior chain. You can see I'm shaking a little bit, it's a difficult exercise, and that's how you'd get progressions out of all those exercises. Okay, so there you have it. There's an example of just one of the exercises and the format that we use inside the lumbar spine course to show you how to progress, how to regress an exercise, how to add load, how to add stability to change the exercise or adapt it to each individual client.